5. Elaine Chubbs Canadian woman Elaine Chubbs was attacked by a swarm of black flies, which inflicted more damage than she could have ever imagined. She was gardening at home when she was surrounded by a group of black flies but didn't really feel their bite. Elaine kept working as if nothing was happening, being only mildly annoyed by the swarm of flies. When she entered her home though, her husband was alarmed by the sight of her feet. She was bleeding profusely and had a massive rash. It was an odd case, as these flies often bite their victims in different parts of the body. Still, this swarm concentrated their efforts on the retired woman's ankle, creating a wound that swelled up and turned a dark shade of purple. Elaine developed a high fever and had to take antibiotics, as well as be confined to bed rest. Over the course of several days, her ankles had become so swollen that the woman could hardly stand up or walk around. An expert in this particular fly, Dr. Douglas Curry, said that he'd never seen a pattern of bites like the ones Elaine had suffered. Apparently, the Labrador region of Canada had been infested by this small fly during that season, as several other people reported similar incidents. The wound got so bad without Elaine noticing because the fly injects both an anesthetic and an anticoagulant to make sure its victim doesn't feel the bite and bleeds appropriately. That way, they can feed undisturbed. This was the reason why at first, Elaine hadn't realized the severity of the attack. Next up, we'll discuss a deadly sickness being spread by the sandfly in Kenya. But first, let's learn more about these small but dangerous insects. Today's video was requested by Curtis Dublin. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Flies come in different sizes and shapes, and there are plenty of subcategories within this classification. They are insects and hold a series of similar qualities that place them within the Diptera order. They have two wings that allow them to fly, as well as mouth parts that will either enable them to suck liquids or pierce through skin and suck blood. They also have small claws or pads on their feet, which allow them to hold onto any surface, even smooth ones. They're often considered pests in various parts of the world and can go from being merely annoying to disease carriers that are potentially lethal for both humans and animals. There are more than 150,000 types of flies, which include mosquitoes, fruit flies, black flies, midges, bot flies, tetse fly, and many others. There are two main extant classifications. The nematocera are usually smaller with longer antennae, and the brachycera are larger and with shorter antennae. Nematoceras mostly lay their eggs in water while the brachycera tends to be more aggressive and many of their larvae have parasitic growth cycles. In many of the flies that require blood for cell sustainability, it's the female who actually takes the bite. For example, the male mosquito feeds on nectar while the female is the one who hunts for blood. They need it for sustaining the biological processes of egg production. Their mouths are shaped in a way that allows them to break their victim's skin and even their saliva fulfills a task. It lubricates the wound to retrieve the plasma. Most of these insects also have a chemical that numbs the area so that they're able to continue their predatory ways without their victims noticing the pain. 4. Leishmaniasis Outbreak in Kenya the sandfly was responsible for an outbreak of leishmaniasis in several regions of Kenya mainly focused on the counties of Mendera, Wajir and Garissa. During 2019, more than 2,696 people were affected by this disease and over 34 people died as a direct consequence of being bitten by a sandfly. The sandfly is one of the few pests that carry this disease and has been especially vicious in the Kenyan region. Victims developed terrible skin sores large enough to look like grisly wounds. Most of those affected displayed painful ulcers that actually resembled leprosy skin lesions. What's worse, they don't usually heal on their own and the impoverished population barely has access to proper health care and treatment. The victims also developed ulcers around the mouth and nose, but those were among the more benign effects. Those who ended up dying from the disease suffered from the most aggressive subtype known as visceral leishmaniasis. Their organs, mostly the spleen and liver, were affected by the parasite. 
it caused them to expand and suffer considerable damage. The surviving victims were left with deforming scars that manifested in lumps or circular, uneven marks on the skin. The Kenyan government has been taking measures to eradicate the sand fly through fumigation, but resources for such efforts are low. There isn't a vaccine to prevent this disease, and the outbreak hasn't been completely stopped as of the making of this video. More victims are expected by early 2020. Before we get to a middle-aged woman who developed a nasty infection and painful blisters after the attack of a Blanford fly, let's take a moment to discover where the flies are located around the world. The truth of the matter is that flies can be located anywhere in the world. There are different types in every region which adapt to the climate and conditions surrounding them. They're considered plagues in some countries and merely a nuisance in others. They've called almost all regions their home, and though some types can't survive in certain climates, other subspecies will thrive in it instead. Flies can actually be found everywhere except for Antarctica, where the weather conditions are too extreme even for these adaptable insects to live in. The largest known fly is the Goromidas heros, which grows as big as 2.7 inches long and can be found in South American countries such as Brazil, Bolivia and Paraguay. The most dangerous fly is considered to be the tetse fly and it inhabits Africa, mostly the tropical areas. It transmits various deadly illnesses, the most lethal being the sleeping disease, which we'll discuss soon. 3. Suzanne Bannister Suzanne Bannister, a British 44-year-old woman, suffered the consequences of being attacked by a vicious Blandford fly. She's hardly the only victim with several other people in the country having suffered the painful bite and its gruesome consequences. Suzanne was having lunch with her family during a barbecue in their garden when she was bitten by a Blanford fly. She initially reported not feeling any pain, but that would change later in the evening. Suzanne kept scratching her ankle while in bed, unable to sleep properly. When she checked her legs, concerned by the growing pain, she realized that they were swollen and incredibly red. The following morning, she noticed that it was more than just her ankles. Her face was throbbing in pain and she'd developed an infection. The British woman had blisters on her face, arms and even her feet. She also had a painful itch she felt would be made worse by scratching. The solution came in the form of antibiotics, but it took longer than a week for the worst symptoms to subside. Up next, we'll talk about the nasty attacks UK residents suffered from the tiny horsefly, but first, We'll discuss some of the ways the flies can actually harm and kill you. The fly by its own means can't really kill a human being. Its bite can cause irritation and mild pain, as well as blisters and even infection in untreated wounds. The problem with some species of flies though is that they carry dangerous diseases that can indeed be lethal to human beings. As we discussed in a previous entry, the most dangerous fly is the tetse, which is a carrier for the horrid sleeping sickness. Victims suffer from two distinct stages. The first one is characterized by high fever, pain in the joints, and irritation of the skin, which leads to itching. It's highly important to seek treatment during this phase, as it's far more easily treatable before it reaches its second stage. People can also suffer from anemia and cardiac or kidney dysfunctions. The second phase, though, is when the disease truly gets problematic. The parasite reaches the central nervous system and affects the victim's sleeping cycles. Those who suffer from this disease sleep for hours at a time, but mostly during the day, unable to rest during the night. They also suffer from weakness or paralysis of the limbs, general confusion and intense tremors. Victims of this tiny insect may become highly aggressive or psychotic. The condition can lead to a coma where the person's organs will begin to fail. This eventually results in death. The medication that can be described during this stage has a 5% chance of causing the death of the patient. So even the solution can end up being a problem in and of itself. 2. British Victims of Horsefly Attacks Several people in Britain have suffered from the vicious bite of the small horsefly. Though the consequences are rarely lethal, it can still be an incredibly painful experience. Several victims have suffered from swollen limbs and dealt with painful blisters that would take weeks to heal. 
These small insects can even bite through clothes, so not even wearing long sleeves saved the victims from attacks. Those affected described the bite as feeling sharp and unpleasant, with a tingling undertone. Then a sharp pain would typically settle in. The horsefly can even rip through human skin, so it's more than just a simple puncture wound. A number of people have reported being attacked several times by the same horsefly as they were paying more attention to their initial bite. But the consequences are more severe than the pain they might experience. The bite caused several British citizens to develop rashes as well as to feel dizzy and weak. They also developed large blisters. These were potentially dangerous as healthcare professionals warned they can easily become infected. It took some time for them to heal and people even reported removing pus from the wounds. Coming up next, a woman discovers the lumps in her head started to move, but first we'll discuss how to avoid these nasty insects and how to survive their attack. Before we continue, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. Stop clowning around and check it out, because your purchases really help support the channel. When it comes to flies, it's crucial to use repellents and, if possible, wear long sleeve clothing. It's also vital to visit the doctor if you begin developing symptoms such as high fever or rashes on your skin. Don't try to self-medicate or ignore the symptoms, as infection of open wounds is a genuine possibility. Several diseases can be carried by these insects, such as dengue, malaria, and sleeping sickness. If you suspect you may be suffering from any of these, it's paramount to visit the hospital at once. If you're traveling to locations where disease-carrying flies are an issue, it's fundamental you receive the proper vaccines before getting on the plane. When it comes to mosquitoes, which transmit dengue and Zika, a way of preventing them from reproducing is cleaning accumulated water from backyards and gardens. 1. Unnamed woman has larvae in her head. During a trip to Argentina, an unnamed British woman got bitten by a bot fly. What she didn't know was that the small insect had done a lot more than just bite into her. When the woman returned to her home country, she began feeling sick and noticed a big cyst emerging on her scalp. She was given antibiotics and thought the problems would stop there, but it was only the beginning. The cysts began to grow and release an odd fluid. They also caused a painful kind of sting in her head. She said it felt like a stabbing sensation, though she couldn't explain why it was happening. The woman was hospitalized when the cysts grew larger than 0.7 inches each. Her concerns turned to horror as the lumps in her head seemed to be moving. That's when she was diagnosed with the real condition she was suffering from. Doctors found that bot fly larvae were living under her skin. They attempted to extract the maggots and managed to remove one. The others were killed by applying Vaseline over the lumps, effectively depriving the larvae of oxygen. Once they were dead, a plastic surgeon was able to eliminate the rest of the parasites. The woman was left with painful wounds, but the doctors said they'd heal over time with proper treatment. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be bitten by a tetse fly or eat raw chicken? Let us know in the comment section below.